In this video, I'll show you how to do the air sleeve maintenance on a Fox Float rear shock. I'll be using the EVOL, which stands for extra volume, but the procedure that I show should work on all of the float series shocks. What you'll need to do this service, it's not much, you'll just need some Fox float fluid. If you do this often, I recommend getting a container of it like this, or you can get individual little pillow packs, which have a couple cc's of fluid in each pack. Get a cheap little syringe like this from the drugstore. You'll need a four or five millimeter Allen wrench to get your shock off your bike. And then having a bench vise is really helpful, but it's not necessary. You could just put something long through the top eyelet of the shock like a screwdriver. If you do use a bench vise, you're either going to want one with plastic jaws or just use a grip pad like I'll show when I do this service. We are gonna remove the rear shock from the bicycle, but before we do that, we're just gonna let the air out and then I'm gonna place the bike on the ground. I've got it in a work stand right now and just gently kind of cycle the shock to get the negative air out of the shock. Before you let the air out, you wanna hook up a shock pump and see what the pressure is so you're not having to guess and reset up your shock. And also remember that some PSI will go into the hose. So what I do is I hook up the shock pump, I get my reading. So I've got 114 PSI that read there. And then I get another reading and I take the difference. So that's 106. And so that's gonna be an eight, well it's 107 now. So seven PSI difference. Adding the seven PSI difference to the pressure that I got the first time, it's gonna give me 121 PSI. So that was my starting point. Again, that way I don't have to guess. Actually, with the shock pump already hooked up, I can just let all the air out. Or you can just put a little tiny flat blade screwdriver in there to let your air out. So like I said, I like to just cycle the shock just a little bit to get the negative air out before I remove it from the bike. Here's a little tip for you. Before you take the bolts out, take your phone out and just take a picture of it. Because sometimes you'll be putting the shock back in the bike and you'll be like, well, the, did the bolt go on that side or did it start on that side? And it just takes some of the guesswork out of it. This is especially true if you're new to doing this. I'm not gonna take the rear wheel off, so I'm gonna put like a towel and a rag in the linkages so that they don't hit the frame. And now I'll just undo the bolts to take the shock out. I'm gonna do the bottom bolt first. When it comes time to slide the bottom bolt out, just put your hand on the shock or the linkage just to make sure it comes apart gently. There we go. Then I'm gonna remove the top bolt. And when it comes time to slide the top bolt out, just make sure you put your hand on the shock. Now you may have some little washers or spacers. It just depends on the brand of bike. This one just has some bushings, but I've had some that will have some little washers between. So keep an eye on those. All right, shock's out. So now I've got the top eyelet of the shock clamped in a bench vise. You wanna have a bench vise with either plastic jaws or use something soft like this rubber grip pad. Before you unthread the canister, take off the travel adjust O-ring and then wipe everything down real good. You're probably gonna have some dirt and grit and maybe some old float fluid just kind of down here. Just wipe it off before we unthread the canister. Now unthread the canister. Sometimes you can do it by your hands, which I can't hear, or you may wanna use a grip pad. Never use a strap wrench to tighten it. You always wanna just tighten it by hand, but if it's for some reason kind of tight, you can use a strap wrench. Put your hand underneath when you take this off, just in case it flies off, which it shouldn't if you cycled the shock in your bike. All right, and we're just gonna pull it off. Now take a clean rag or paper towel with some rubbing alcohol and just wipe everything down really good. Also examine your seals and backup rings. In this video, I'm not gonna show you how to replace those. I'm gonna actually do that pretty soon in another video. It's really easy, you just pop out the little backup rings there and take the seals out. These look pretty good, but this shock is coming on, well, probably a year and a half of use. And so I'm probably gonna be replacing these pretty soon, which again will be another video. But in this video, we're just gonna clean everything off really good. And then same thing on your canister. I've got a lot of dirt and stuff down here on this seal. Also look at this seal, make sure it's not cracked. You wanna kind of feel it with your fingers, make sure it's not like really hard. Again, if you wanna replace these, it's pretty easy. You just pop them out with a little wooden pick, a metal pick, uh, carefully. Wipe it inside and out. 
Make sure your threads up here are clean. Again, I'm just wiping this off with a paper towel. This is a shop rag, doesn't really get any lint on anything, which I really like these. Disposable shop rag, I should say. All right, now that everything's clean, it's time to put it back together. I'm also gonna get, there's kind of some dirt down here by the bottom eyelet. There we go. Yeah, you're just cleaning off everything really good before we put it back together. And now it's time to put some float fluid in the shock. And this is probably the main reason I do this procedure is because after about, I don't know, three to four months of riding, the float fluid kind of comes out and you want to put some more back in. So I'm gonna take the syringe Dip it into the canister of float fluid. I'm just gonna suck out about five cc's. You only wanna put about two in here, but we're gonna put some on the seals and everything. Now you can also get some little pillow packs, like I said at the beginning, and I think those are a couple cc's. You can use those too, but I like getting this bottle of float fluid, especially if you're gonna do this probably every four to six months, which is what I do. And so I'm just gonna apply some of the float fluid down inside there on that seal. I'm gonna kind of work it in with your fingers. Make sure that's coated. And then we'll do the same thing up here on these seals, these rings here. Let's coat those. I'm gonna put a little bit on the threads. And you'll probably get some on the body of the shock like I just did. And I'm going to wipe that off in a minute. So I'm going to put this back in. Now, here's a little tip for you. A lot of times it is difficult to thread this in by hand because of the pressure inside the, the air chamber, uh, the negative air chamber there. And so uh, what I typically do is I will mount the shock back on the bike and push down the suspension a little bit and then thread it on. Sometimes it's worth a try just to do this here. So I'm gonna wash this off really good. I'm gonna try it. If it's too hard, I find it easier just to put it in the bike and compress the suspension. No matter how you choose to do it, you do wanna put about two cc's of the float fluid inside. So I'm gonna let this hang down just a little bit so it doesn't drip out. And I'm actually gonna put a little bit more in my syringe. Again, about two cc's is all you need or two milliliters. So just drip that down inside the shock and definitely have this pointed down. That's another reason that's kind of nice to do on the bike is because, you know, it won't drip out, especially, well, if you have a vertical shock, it definitely won't drip out. Horizontally, you gotta be a little bit more careful. All right, so I'm gonna try to do this by hand. Yeah, it's hard. All right, we're putting it on the bike. That's what I recommend. Let's do it. Before you put the rear shock back on the bike, just take another rag with some rubbing alcohol and clean everything off really good in these areas that are almost impossible to get to when you have a rear shock on. Make sure you put your travel adjust O-ring on the shaft and then we're going to just slide the rear shock back in. We'll do the top bolt first. Make sure if you do have fluid inside that you be careful. Uh, if, you're, if you just want to go ahead and put the shock on the bike first, then you can add your fluid after you mount it in the bike before you thread on the canister. And by the way, I always put a little bit of grease on the threads of most bolts unless they're going to thread into carbon. I'm going to lift up on the suspension linkage just to get the eyelet to drop down in there. And I'm going to put the bottom bolt in. I'll slide it through and then I'll thread it in there. I've got the bike on the ground. I've got two cc's of float fluid in the shock. And I'm just going to push down on the suspension and then rotate the body of the shock clockwise, normal threaded direction as you're pushing down gently on the suspension. Sometimes it does take a few turns for the threads to catch, but they will eventually catch. 
and then you thread it all the way in, doing it hand tight. Now, this is the easiest way to thread this in, but I will tell you there are some bikes where it might be hard to get your hand in there and really turn the body of the shock. And it doesn't take a lot of torque to turn this thing, but again, you know, this bike's really easy. This is a bike that's super easy to get the shock on and off. And once it kind of gets to the end, again, just hand tight. Do not use any kind of strap wrench or anything like that. Just kind of tighten as good as you can with your hand and a grip pad most likely, and you're good. And we're just gonna add our pressure that we calculated before we started. And the very last thing that I do is I check the top and bottom bolt torque specs. So I just snug these up when I put the shock back on the bike. These go to 12 Newton meters. So I always use a torque wrench on my suspension. So that is how you do the air sleeve maintenance on a Fox float rear shock minus replacing the seals and backup rings. But like I said, I'll probably be doing that in the not too distant future. So stay tuned to the channel if you're interested in that video. As always, questions or comments, drop those below and follow me on Instagram at ClintG37. Thanks for watching.